Eden, we don't want Princess Kate to turn into Megan with these cringe videos. I know using her name like that is a way to get us to engage, but, like seriously, Megan is way too intelligent to ever do this tampon advert release over medical issues. All of this. From the clothes to the hair to the videos, it's a sad attempt to capture some of Megan's magic. It fails every time because it's inauthentic to who Kay is. It also fails because they have never understood Megan or her motives. There's real purpose in what she does. We don't want that this cringe narcissist bitch to turn into the intelligent, articulate duchess who would never disrespect cancer patients with this me, me, me horrible video of hash Kate fake middle clone. These people, Megan and Harry have nothing to do with whatever is up with Will and Kate. They moved 5,000 miles away almost five years ago, and still the British media try to find a way to blame Megan and Harry. Eden is an idiot because Duchess Meghan would never lower herself to be in such a cheap, cheesy, fake production. They always have to bring her name into it so they can get clicks. Talking about Just Kakati does not make them money as no one's interested in her boring racist self. Yet Meghan hasn't ever done these cringe videos to announce anything within her personal life. Meghan has written articles and given links to support agencies. Kate can't do that because she's lying. Um, Meg and Harry don't have to do stupid fake PDA videos. Meg and Harry are truly in love and it just oozes out of them naturally. All week, the British media has been freaking out over the Princess of Wales' cancer-free video, which was filmed to look like a commercial for douche. I think the baseline reaction across the board was that the video was cringe, awkward, and poorly conceived. What's taken the criticism next level is that Buckingham Palace seems to be quite upset about it too. The palace, known for its stoic and reserved nature, rarely comments on public controversies. However, this time, the reaction has been noticeably different. The walls of Buckingham Palace, which have witnessed centuries of history, seem to be echoing with discontent. The grandeur of the palace stands in stark contrast to the turmoil brewing within its walls. King Charles and Queen Camilla, who have always maintained a dignified public image, think the whole thing is unbecoming and tacky. Their disapproval is not just a matter of personal taste, but reflects a deeper concern about the image of the monarchy. King Charles, who has spent his life preparing for his role, is particularly sensitive to anything that might tarnish the royal family's reputation. Queen Camilla, known for her grace and poise, shares his sentiments. They believe that such controversies distract from the more important issues that the monarchy should be addressing. Throughout all of the negative commentary, the Duchess of Sussex has been referenced repeatedly. Meghan Markle, who has always been a polarising figure, finds herself at the centre of this storm once again. Her every move is scrutinised, and her intentions are often questioned. The media frenzy surrounding her is relentless, and it seems that no matter what she does, she cannot escape the spotlight. This latest controversy has only added fuel to the fire, with critics and supporters alike voicing their opinions. You would think that Meghan makes a regular habit of creating bizarre videos where she walks through fields whilst her voiceover describes her medical issues. Meghan does not. In reality, she has been focusing on her philanthropic efforts and raising her family. The portrayal of her in the media often does not align with the reality of her life. She has been working on various charitable projects, advocating for mental health awareness and supporting women's rights. Despite her efforts, the negative narrative persists overshadowing her positive contributions. The public's fascination with her personal life continues to dominate the headlines, making it difficult for her to shift the focus to her work. The Duchess of Sussex remains a figure of intrigue and controversy, caught in the crossfire of public opinion and media sensationalism. The reaction from Buckingham Palace is a testament to the enduring power and influence of the monarchy. The royal family, with its rich history and tradition, holds a unique place in the hearts and minds of people around the world. The palace's response to the controversy highlights the delicate balance they must maintain between tradition and modernity. As the world changes, so too must the monarchy adapt, but not without careful consideration of its legacy. The criticism and the palace's reaction to it underscore the challenges faced by the royal family in navigating the complexities of the modern world while preserving their storied heritage. The monarchy's ability to endure and thrive amidst such challenges is a testament to its resilience and the deep-rooted respect it commands. The current situation serves as a reminder of the ever-evolving nature of the royal family's role in society and the ongoing scrutiny they face. Public reaction to the controversy has been mixed, with some people expressing support for the royal family and others siding with Meghan Markle. 
social media has been abuzz with opinions, and newspaper headlines have been dominated by the story. The divide in public opinion reflects the broader societal debates about tradition, modernity, and the role of the monarchy. As the conversation continues, it remains to be seen how the royal family will navigate this latest challenge and what impact it will have on their public image. The ongoing discourse is a testament to the enduring fascination with the royal family and the complexities of their public and private lives. As night falls over Buckingham Palace, the grandeur of the historic building stands as a silent witness to the unfolding drama. The royal guards continue their watch, a symbol of the monarchy's enduring presence. The London skyline, with its blend of old and new, mirrors the challenges faced by the royal family as they strive to remain relevant in a rapidly changing world. The story of Buckingham Palace's reaction to the controversy is just one chapter in the ongoing saga of the British monarchy, a story that continues to captivate and intrigue people around the globe. During Meghan's medical issues, her miscarriage, her suicidal ideation, Meghan spoke and wrote about the issues respectfully and movingly, and never turned those issues into a cringe-fest douche commercial. Well, in the Mail's latest Palace Confidential episode, they're once again crying about Kate's dumb video and comparing Kate to Meghan. Oh, you know, it's just the sort of thing that Meghan would have loved to do. Trust me when I say that Meghan would not have loved to make a weird video announcement that she ended chemo. Beyond the issue of Meghan living rent-free in all of these people's heads, there is a much deeper narrative at play here. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been at the centre of media scrutiny ever since they decided to step back from their royal duties. The couple has faced relentless criticism and invasive coverage from the press, which has often painted them in a negative light. This constant barrage of negative attention has undoubtedly taken a toll on their mental health and well-being. In an effort to reclaim their own story and set the record straight, Meghan and Harry produced their docuseries, where they told their side of the story. This docuseries was a bold move, allowing them to share their experiences and perspectives directly with the public without the filter of the often biased media. The series provided an intimate look into their lives, their struggles and their triumphs, offering viewers a chance to see the real Meghan and Harry beyond the tabloid headlines. One of the most compelling aspects of the docuseries was the use of private footage which they shot themselves. This footage offered a raw and unfiltered glimpse into their personal lives, capturing moments of joy, sorrow and everything in between. It was a powerful way to humanise the couple and show the world that they are just like anyone else, dealing with the same challenges and emotions that we all face. Years later, in what seemed like an attempt to emulate the success of Meghan and Harry's docuseries, Kate hired a commercial director to copy the Sussexes. This move was seen by many as an effort to craft a more relatable and down-to-earth image for herself and her family. By using a professional director, Kate aimed to create a polished and carefully curated portrayal of her life, one that would resonate with the public and counteract any negative perceptions. However, some critics argue that this attempt to manipulate the public into believing that her marriage is happy and healthy may have backfired. The highly produced nature of the footage, combined with the obvious intent to control the narrative, left some viewers feeling skeptical about the authenticity of the portrayal. While the effort to present a positive image is understandable, it also highlights the ongoing struggle within the royal family to balance public perception with private reality. The contrasting approaches of Meghan and Harry's raw, self-shot footage and Kate's professionally directed content underscore the different ways in which members of the royal family navigate their public personas and personal lives. Ultimately, this saga reflects the broader challenges faced by public figures in the age of social media and 24 7th news cycles where the line between public and private is increasingly blurred. This is actually something I'm stuck on too. Yes, it's the way that Catherine might have wanted to tell her story, but she's surrounded by advisors. I want to know the inside story of how the video came to be. What were the motivations, the inspirations and the behind the scenes decisions that led to its creation? Was it really just Kate hiring Will War on her own initiative, driven by a personal vision to capture a specific moment or message? And why Norfolk? Was it the serene beauty of the British countryside in summer that inspired her to choose this location? Or was there a deeper, more personal connection to this place that made it the perfect backdrop for the video? Or were there meetings where the clown show advisors, with their myriad of opinions and suggestions, played a significant role in shaping the final product?